Hi, I'm Yuval Neal, and I'm glad to present our study on regional slow waves and spindles in human sleep, a result of a collaboration between the University of Wisconsin and UCLA. We usually think of sleep as a global, all or none phenomenon. Sleep is defined behaviorally as a state of unresponsiveness and is indeed accompanied by global changes in metabolism and neuromodulation. Slow waves are the major electrical activity pattern in sleep. They reflect a slow oscillation of neurons between active and inactive states, and they are linked to the functional benefits of sleep, such as memory consolidation. Previous EEG studies in our lab suggested that slow waves are not identical across the cortex. For example, their intensity changes between regions depending on prior use and plastic processes. We therefore hypothesize that the slow oscillation may occur in a regional manner. To establish this, scalp EEG is not sufficient. One needs to examine neuronal activity simultaneously across many brain regions in natural sleep, and we were able to achieve this through collaboration with the epilepsy surgery program at UCLA. In this study, 13 patients with intractable epilepsy were implanted with intracranial depth electrodes to monitor their seizures. The key challenge in this patient is to identify an area in the brain where potentially the seizures are coming from. Depth EEG was recorded from contacts along the electrode shaft while local field potentials and single unit activity were recorded from nearby microwires. Overall, 130 sites in the medial frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes were inspected. Importantly, 8 to 12 brain regions were monitored simultaneously in each patient, allowing us to examine the relation between sleep oscillations in different regions. Patients were continuously monitored during a full night sleep study. Scalp EEG, eye movements, and muscle tone measurements were used to determine the state of sleep. Here is an example of electrical brain activity across 15 seconds of deep non-REM sleep. On top, in red, are slow waves in the scalp EEG. On the bottom, in blue, is the intracranial EEG from deep in the temporal cortex. The green dots show individual slow waves that were automatically detected and carefully separated from pathological events. In black, we see the multi-unit activity and action potentials of six neurons in that brain region. We examined slow waves across multiple scales, from individual neurons, through populations, and all the way to scalp measurements. In slow wave sleep, neuronal activity alternates between states of silence, or off periods, shown by the green bar, and states of strong neuronal activity, or on periods, shown by the orange bar. A proper analysis across all waves in 600 cells shows that neurons increase and decrease their activity in concert with the local electrical fields. In each brain region, many neurons were oscillating in phase with slow waves. But do neurons in different brain regions tend to turn on and off together or separately? Here is our main novel finding, an example of regional slow waves. A slow wave occurs in the left posterior cingulate cortex. The neurons stop firing while the depth EEG in blue shows a positive peak. A few seconds later, the right posterior cingulate falls into silence while the other region remains highly active. The scalp EEG on top shows little trace of these events. Are regional slow waves the rule or an exception? In other words, do slow waves typically occur locally in some brain regions and not others? or do they usually occur globally in most or all of the brain? Well, it turns out that most slow waves occur only in some brain regions. To be clear, when we see a big wave in the scalp EEG in early deep sleep, it does tend to be global. But many times, in fact most of the time, and especially towards the end of sleep, slow waves are typically smaller and occur in some regions and not others, with only a weak trace on the scalp. Since slow waves occurred mostly locally, we wondered whether the other signature of sleep EEG, sleep spindles, may also occur in a regional manner. To our surprise, we found many local sleep spindles. In fact, just like slow waves, most spindles occurred in some regions and not others. Finally, we found that slow waves do not happen exactly at the same time across the brain. Rather, they had a tendency to propagate along typical paths. On average, slow waves and underlying neuronal activity occurred earliest in the frontal lobe 
and only about 200 milliseconds later in the temporal lobe and finally in the hippocampus. Overall, our study shows that slow waves and sleep spindles typically occur in some brain regions and not others. What are the implications of these findings? Well, we knew already that in some extreme cases, the sleep of some birds and dolphins evolved in a specialized way such that some regions are active while others asleep. In some sleep disorders such as sleepwalking, we enter a dissociated state when parts of our brain are awake while others are asleep. Now we find that in humans and as a rule throughout the night, some regions can show sleep oscillations while others don't. Only some of this action can be picked up by scalp EEG that is typically used to monitor human sleep. An intriguing possibility is that such local sleep waves may invade our brain activity when we are awake but sleep deprived, reflecting a form of piecemeal sleep. What do these findings mean for the role sleep plays in memory consolidation, a process that may involve information transfer between regions? The results raise intriguing questions regarding this process, since when one region is transmitting a message, other regions are often offline and cannot receive it. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.